Hey guys, welcome back to the Blurred YouTube channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up the Captain Mini V2 fuser and the Ditchin 6th Gen fuser. I'm also gonna show you how to flash EDID and all the PC settings you're gonna need so you can get some ESP on your main monitor and start gaming, let's go. All right, so starting with the Captain fuser, it's gonna come in a box, maybe similar to this, and you're gonna get a couple things. So. First thing's gonna be the power cable. Um, you're gonna get two HDMI cables. You're gonna get these little feet that can go on the bottom of the fuser. And then you're gonna have a remote to control the fuser and then the actual fuser itself. All right, so taking a closer look at the fuser, we're gonna notice a couple things. So there's gonna be five buttons here, an LED light right there. And then we flip over to the back. We're gonna have our HDMI input one, our HDMI input two, and then our display port and HDMI outputs. This is just depending on what your monitor supports. And then we're gonna have a power plug and a power button that you can turn off and on for your fuser. So input one is gonna connect to your second PC. Input two is gonna connect to your main PC. And then display port out or HDMI out is gonna connect from the fuser to your monitor. You'll also notice you'll have a remote. So DEF1 is going to turn the fuser on or off. CH1 is going to display your second PC only. CH2 is gonna display your main PC only. And then auto is gonna fuse them. Also note that because of shipping rules, there's no batteries with the remote. So you're gonna need two AAA batteries which you can just go ahead and install like this. Put the back on. And you'll notice like the lights are turning on now with every single click and you're good to go. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and plug in the fuser so we can start using it. So on the bottom, I went ahead and installed the feet. Those are just like little stickers that you can peel off and that's to help with cooling for the fan on the bottom. But if we flip over to the back, we're gonna have Input one, so remember this is connected to our second PC. For me, that's this cable right here. And then input two, that's connected to our main PC. So for me, that's this cable right here. And then display port out or HDMI out. This is dependent on your monitor. Personally, I use display port, so I'm gonna go ahead and connect it right there. And then our little power cable, which is right here. Go ahead and connect that. And then We'll notice after we press DEF1. Our monitor turns on. Everything looks good. And then we can press CH1 to toggle to our second PC. And then CH2 to toggle to our main PC. And then auto if you want to fuse. You'll notice the stuff up there. And yeah. So right away, you're going to notice that... Whenever you move your cursor, it's going to duplicate. Your second PC is going to show the exact same thing as your main PC. And some of you may like this, but this is not how you should have it. So you're gonna to wanna to go onto your second PC and press Windows P, and then this pop-up will appear and you're gonna press Extend. And then some of you, it might automatically work perfectly, but some may not. So you're gonna to have to drag to the right and then your cursor will appear right here. You can just double click and press on display settings, and then you can go over here and swap these and then press apply. And now I can drag left and right onto the monitor and it works good. Also, since we're already here, let's go ahead and change the settings we're gonna need for the ESP. So. This is my main monitor. You can go ahead and press identify and then you'll see the two and the one was there. You can go ahead and press on number two and then select make this my main display just like that. It'll freeze for a second and then you'll notice all my icons are here. So now my ESP will show on this monitor rather than this and it'll save us a lot of time in the future. All right, so after we went ahead and changed our monitor settings so that we can get the ESP on the main monitor, you're gonna notice you're gonna be stuck on 60 hertz. You can see right there, 
and you can see right there. So the way to fix this is by taking our remote and you're gonna notice a couple things. So 1K60, 1K144, and then 1K240, and then also 2K at 144 and 4K at 60. These all correlate to the Hertz and then the resolution. So if some of you have like nicer monitors and you can do these, go for it. Personally, I'm gonna do 1K at 240. You'll notice one display turns off, both might, but whenever it turns back on and we go and look at our settings, it's gonna be on 240 right there. And then this one also changed to 240. And this is just to ensure that we're playing at the absolute max refresh rate. So our ESP is looking very crisp. All right, so now that the fuser is fully set up, we can go ahead and inject the ESP into our game. So go ahead and load up your game and then take your remote, press CH1 to go back to your second PC. And remember how I showed you earlier, we got the display to show on the monitor rather than the second screen. We're gonna go ahead and load up our blurred folder, run blurred. And now we can see our ESP has appeared and then we can go ahead and press on the auto button. And now it's injected into our game. It's on our main PC and everything is good to go. All right, guys, now we're gonna go ahead and unbox the ditch infuser. So mine came with the power cable. It came with three HDMI cables and then the actual fuser itself. This is what it looks like. Some of yours might come with a USB-C cable also, but mine came like this. And now I'm gonna go ahead and show you the first step we need to take to start setting this up. And then, yeah, we can get started. All right, so the first step to setting up our ditch infuser is to go ahead and get our monitor info just in case we have to flash EDID because of random monitor issues. So we're gonna run this program called Monitor Asset Manager. It'll be linked in the description also. It only takes a couple seconds to load, so we're just gonna wait for it real quick. And now that it's loaded, we're gonna make sure our monitor is selected. So this is mine. If you have multiple monitors, then make sure you have the correct one selected. You can see the name of your monitor right here. It's gonna be real time and then some numbers. Also, make sure you have 00, zero selected and then go to file, save as. I'm gonna personally save it to my downloads. So home, downloads, open, and then save. And now it is fully saved on my PC. If I go to my downloads folder, it is gonna be right here and everything is good to go. Now we can get to the physical setup part. So I'm about to show you that now. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this fuser. We're gonna notice a few things. So we have a power button. We're gonna have four LEDs and this is gonna show how our fuser is connected and if it is. Then we're gonna have a K1, two, three, and four button. K1 is gonna cycle between our resolutions. K2 is going to cycle between RGB levels zero through 20. K3 is going to reset our RGB back to zero. And then K4 is going to fuse. Now, if we flip over to the back, we're gonna see output, input one and input two. It could also say HDMI, HDMI one and HDMI two. And then we're gonna have a USB type C and our power cable. Now, our output is gonna go from the fuser to the monitor. Input one is gonna go from our main PC to the fuser. And then input two is gonna go from our second PC to the fuser. So we're gonna go ahead and plug this in now. This is my main PC cable. So I'm gonna connect it to input one. This right here is my second PC cable. So we're gonna to go to input two. And then this is my monitor cable. So we're gonna connect this one to output. And then here is the power cable right here. And we're gonna go ahead and plug that in. Now the fuser has turned on. So whenever the fuser is fully connected now, it might have four LEDs, it might have three. If it has three, just like this, that is perfectly okay. So you can go ahead and press K4, and that's going to fuse your monitor. If you see in the top left, it said overlay on. Now, if we go ahead and press the K4 button and unfuse, it says HDMI one only. If we hold K4, just like this, and then we can let go, it's gonna show us HDMI two only, we can hold it again to toggle back to HDMI one only, just like so. And then we can once again press K4 and now it's on overlay. And this is how we toggle between both PCs and also fusing.
All right, so I went ahead and toggled to HDMI 2 only, and once again, that was by holding K4, and we're gonna notice that our monitor is actually duplicating just like so, and we do not want it like this. So we're gonna go ahead and press Windows P, this pop-up shall appear, and then you're gonna press on Extend. Now, the monitor might turn off for a second, and that's completely okay. And then we're gonna right-click on our wallpaper once it loads. There we go. Press on display settings. And then right here, we can go ahead and press identify. So you can see one and then two, we want to flip these. So go ahead and drag that over like that. You can align it however you want, like so, and then press apply. And then also while you're on number two, go ahead and select make this my main display. And now the ESP will be showing on this monitor and it's going to save us a lot of time in the future. Plus, if you drag your mouse all the way to the right, it's gonna go onto the new screen just like so, and there's absolutely no issues. Now we can go ahead and hold K4 again and get back to our main PC with HDMI 1. So a few of you might notice you're stuck on 60 hertz. Me personally, you can go ahead and select the higher, but for you, it might not have these higher options. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to fix this so that you can get the absolute max hertz slash refresh rate for your monitor. And that's gonna be by flashing EDID. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. All right, so for flashing EDID, we're going to have absolutely nothing connected to the fuser, as you can see. And our monitor is literally going to be connected brand new. So HDMI cable from the monitor directly to your PC, no fuser involved. And then we're going to go ahead and connect a USB-C to our fuser. So for me, I have a USB-C cable right here. We're going to plug this into the fuser. And then we're also going to take our power cable and connect this to the fuser. Remember, no HDMI cables at all. Only the D1 light is on. And then I'm going to go ahead and hop on my PC and show you exactly what you need to do from there. All right, so now that we have the fuser connected so that we can go ahead and flash the EDID, we're gonna come to our device manager and go to the ports tab. And we're gonna see right here, USB serial CH340, mine is on COM8. And then we're gonna go into the description and download the Ditchin Fuser EDID folder. We're gonna come here and extract it. And then we're gonna open it up and run the tool. We're gonna go ahead and use the new fuser option right here. We're gonna select COM8. You can press this little drop down arrow and see which COM your fuser is connected to. We're gonna select 1920 by 1080 because this is the resolution I'm going to be using. If you're gonna be using anything like this, then you can select those. And then select this box right here. This will appear. You can select right here. Go to downloads, select your DSP info. This was your EDID file that we got from earlier. Press open. And then we're gonna go ahead and select this top button. And then this will appear right here. We can go ahead and click okay. <clears throat> and then now our fuser has the EDID injected into it. And we can go ahead and connect the fuser like I showed you earlier. And whenever you go to your settings, you'll be good to go. We're gonna go ahead and check that right now. I'm gonna plug it in and then check the settings. Okay, now I have my fuser reconnected. We're gonna go ahead and check our uh, monitor settings. So go to display info down here to advanced display. Select on the drop down, and here we go. So we can go all the way back up to 240 hertz, just like that, and we are good. Now you should be able to play on whatever refresh rate your monitor maximum supports, and this is gonna help a lot with making sure the ESP looks really crispy, but also making sure all of your games look amazing too. Also, I wanted to go ahead and show you, just in case you were having any issues with your EDID, you're gonna go ahead and select your COM port right here. I only have COM1, but you'd select whatever COM your fuser is on, and then you're gonna press this button right here, and this is going to reset the EDID, basically wiping the fuser completely clean so that you can restart if you run into any problems.
Now, some of you might have a purple or pink hue kind of going on, and I'm gonna show you how you can go ahead and check to see. So if we go into our monitor settings, we're gonna see right here our bit depth is 8-bit, and we want it to be on this, but if you have a pink hue, it might be on 16 or something like that. So the way to fix this is we're gonna open up NVIDIA control panel, we're gonna go to change resolution, and then we're gonna scroll down we can select use NVIDIA color settings. And then right here, you'll have an option like a drop down box. Just set this to eight and then go ahead and press apply. And your pink hue should be gone and you should have no issues. And this is an image of the AMD example. If you don't have an NVIDIA GPU, you can just look at these settings and try to copy them. And then any issues you have should be resolved as well. All right, so now the last step to going ahead and getting ESP onto our game is by loading up Blurred. I went ahead and held K4, so I would be on HDMI 2 only, and I loaded up Blurred just like so. I'm going to go ahead and press load on whatever game I want, and then let this load for a second. Okay, and now that the ESP has loaded, I'm gonna go ahead and press and hold K4 one more time so I can get back to HDMI 1. And then automatically it went to overlay on. So now the ESP is on our main screen, just like so. I hope you guys all have an amazing day and have a great time playing. I'll see you guys later.